Hi Mike here, this is Supreme Gadgets with a retro look at the Scion Series 5. So what is the Scion Series 5? Well it is an ultra portable computer that was developed by the British company Scion and released in 1997. This particular one came from 1999 though, just before the release of the 5MX, which was double the speed, so a bit lost out a bit there. Never mind though. In many ways though, these computers paved the way for tablets and smartphones that we all use today. In a time when computers were still big and heavy, and laptops weren't much more portable either. The Series 5 featured a touchscreen, uh, although it was only grayscale with 16 grey colours, a uh, proper touch type keyboard and various office applications such as a web processor, spreadsheet, database, diaries and other things including a minesweeper type game. Woohoo! So what was the tech specs of the Scion Series 5? Well, it featured an ARM processor, similar to what we have in mobile phones and tablets today, which was clocked at 18 MHz in the uh, Series 5, and it went up to 36 MHz in the Series 5 MX, which, as I said, was released not long after I bought this one. So I did kind of lose out there. It has 8 MB of internal memory. So yeah, when you think about your mobile phones today having 16, 32, 64, 128 gigabytes, this only had 8 megabytes, so you could hardly fit a photograph, never mind anything else, on this palm top. And also, the memory was wiped if the batteries went dead, so you couldn't unplug the batteries or pull the batteries out and leave it for any length of time uh, because you would lose all your data. There was a AA batteries which we featured in the back here. If we just zoom out a little bit. AA batteries, I haven't actually put any in here. AA batteries went in the back here and in this side I believe. I haven't actually got any batteries in here a small coin sized battery was featured in there and that allowed the data on the palm top to be kept if these batteries went dead or was replaced. So yes, the um, if you lost the power then you'd lose all your information on it so uh, there was also the option of having a compact flash storage option which came here. You could have a compact flash card in there and that would obviously be more permanent data storage. So looking more at the palm top itself now, just open it up. As you can see the it actually has quite a clever mechanical mechanism where the keyboard comes out as you can see there. So what we have here is a proper touch type keyboard so it's quite easy to type on. Really nice uh, travelling the key, so it's not like the palm tops of the time that had really spongy uh, sort of rubber buttons. These are proper keyboard keys that you'd find more, ma mainly on a desktop computer or a laptop at the time. The screen is touch screen, but unfortunately it is only black and white, so it's only 16 grey. And the screen is a 5.6 inch with a resolution of 640 by 240, so it's half VGA. So in the side of the palm top we have the stylus which flicks out a little uh, port there. This is a stylus, obviously these are making kind of come back with certain, uh, certain tablets for drawing on them, that type of purposes, but you could touch the screen and draw on the screen with that, or you could of course just use your, your finger as well. Just take another quick look around the device before we turn it on. Oops. You can see there is certain things that are a little bit loose on it now. There was a problem with these devices. 
they um, they had a little bit of paint problem and as you can see the paint has kind of started peeling off this one it did do fairly soon after purchasing it so that was a bit of a problem on the back here we have a serial port which is an RS232 port and that could connect up to the PC and uh, use a piece of software called Cywin to connect to the palm top and uh, transfer data it was a serial port on the computer before the days of the USB so that was there, we've got a little infrared port there for transferring data between palm tops and that we've obviously got the battery compartment there a little speaker there the socket where the uh, stylus goes in there, which still works really nice here we have a little record buttons pull this down, we can record memos, play them back without opening the palm top up, so that's quite handy, handy little feature. This one, as I said before, has the uh, backup battery in, and then this one on this side is the compact flash. We just open it up, oops, gosh, we open it up, just on the back here we've got the technical specifications, we've got there, so series 5, it was available in a 4 megabyte or 8 megabyte, it's got compact flash, infrared epoch which is the operating system which eventually morphed into symbian which was used on some of the uh, smartphones in recent years ARM processor 1997 cyan computers plc made in the uk that type of thing so let's have a look at it starting up so this is a fresh boot because there's no batteries in it so if I just turn it on, you turn it on by pressing the escape key and hopefully it will show up might just have to turn the see if the light is, no it's going to be tricky because as I said it is old so the um, the backlight no longer works on it unfortunately which is a bit of a, a bit of a problem but never mind so it's booting up now you can see on the screen hopefully, i just zoom in a bit, there we go, zoom in on the screen, we can have a look at the screen, there, just pull the, uh, pull the stylus out. So what we've got on it is we have on the bottom here this kind of like a dock um, or icon bar, so we've got the system menu system screen then we've got word processor spreadsheet database agenda diary time world time calculator little sketch program and then we just tap on the extras here and we've got like a spell checker program uh, a programmer whoops i've just gone into that where you can actually type your own programs let's go back to this system back into there comms that's for connecting up to computers and that records you can record memos uh, record music even if you wanted to and your little bombs game which is a bit like minecraft not minecraft god <laughs> minesweeper on the computer not minecraft crikey that would uh, would be good if it could play minecraft on this and just here we've got some icons as well just to show you these are all files stored on the um on the cyan itself so we tap into word it just takes you into the word processor it's kind of like a file manager this as you can see just type in ah. <laughs> there you go quite quite easy I just caught the tab key by accident there as you can see though, and you can change your fonts, you've got different kind of fonts on the screen there, different font sizes, your bold, italic, underline, that type of thing, spell checker, you can even insert graphs and sketches, and you've got your clock here in the corner as well, which is displayed all the time. It's reverted back to uh, 97, I believe. So, we'll have a look at the sheet program, which is just a spreadsheet, as you can see, just a basic spreadsheet there. It does actually work quite well. You can do fairly decent spreadsheets in this. You 
got the database or more like um, an address book really. You've got an agenda which is your uh, calendar, diary, that type of thing. You've got your time which just gives you a nice world map here. Your home time, your cities, that type of thing. Calculator. Just as it says, you know, a normal calculator. And I believe you can have scientific, yes, you can have a normal scientific calculator. And sketch, so you can actually sketch on here pretty well. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not that good at it, really. Go back to system, and it does actually, if we go back into Word, Straight away, it is quite good at multitasking because it's running a 32-bit version of Epoch, the operating system. You can also, you've got spell checkers, which is uh, useful for looking up words. So you just type in a word, it'll just tell me that it's correct, for instance, there. You've got your own programming language. You can actually program this if you want, comms record so you can record stuff and play it back simply this is a test to uh, to see how well you record this is a test to, uh, to see how well you record I don't know if the camera picked that up fairly well but it did play it, play it back it's quite a decent quality so you could certainly make notes on the go with it and then you've got your Mind, mind sweeper, not Minecraft game there, which I am absolutely useless at. I've never been able to play this. Play. Just as Mind Sweeper is on Windows, no one seems to know how to play it properly. So there you are. That is a brief tour of the Science Series Five. We've also got a. Um, Control panel, so you can set your date and time, password, switch on and off, extras bar, that kind of thing. You can even plug a printer into this via the serial port, but uh, most often you'd be able to transfer the information to the computer and then print it off from there. You've also got on-screen menus, so you can switch back up there. You've got all your menus and that. Cut, copy, paste. You can send in thread and receive in thread, and you can also zoom in and out of this screen there. So that is the Cyan Series 5. Well, fortunately, as I said, it is only a black and white screen. There was some that was uh, colour screen back in the late 90s, but they weren't that uh, good, I suppose. They were probably very heavy on the battery life. Um, the keyboards weren't as good as this. This was a really good keyboard for the time. They were really ahead of the time uh, sign with their sign series 5. They did develop the series 7 later on, I think it was either 1999 or 2000 when that came out. And that was more like a more like a netbook, in the actual fact they did call it a netbook type computer. Um, and that had a colour screen, although it was only 256 colours, and a bigger screen keyboard and that type of thing. And unfortunately, Sign then uh, kind of phased out the consumer market. Uh, they went into kind of the corporate market before particularly fading out completely in sort of the 2000s, and now they no longer make anything whatsoever. They're, they're owned by Motorola, I believe, now. Um, so that's quite a sad demise to what was pretty much ahead of its game at the time. As I said, the operating system Epoch on this uh, went into morphed into Symbian, which was used for Nokia phones and that kind of thing before eventually that phased out in favour of Android and that type of thing. So yes, this is kind of the granddaddy to, say, the tablets and smartphones that we use today. In actual fact, Cyan was working, I believe, in the early 2000s on a smartphone of their own. But uh, unfortunately, it never came to pass, really. And as I said, they just went out the consumer market altogether. Um, so that's a pity. You could think, if you looked at what they've developed back in 1997, and they could well have uh, been quite ahead of the game. They could have been on par with Apple and uh, Samsung and that type of companies these days with what they develop, what they innovate, for instance. So it is fairly sad what happened to Scion. Um, but... Last, we've got this as a reminder of what uh, 
what came before the tablets and smartphones we all use today. So that is a quick look at the Scion Series 5. I hope you enjoyed it um, and stay tuned for more videos coming very soon. Thanks very much for watching.